Friends, we cannot tackle the climate crisis without addressing the inequality crisis, the racism crisis, the public health crisis, all these crises that are plaguing our country all at the same time. Our transition to a green future has to be joined and to all these issues. And it's got to be a just transition centered around workers and communities, and especially those most impacted by the climate crisis and all these overlapping issues. Unless we give workers in the fossil fuel industries, the coal, other industries, and frontline communities a seat at the center of the table, I'm not talking about window dressing, but I'm talking about as real valued partners in this work, we are simply not going to achieve the profound and rapid change we absolutely need. And it's important to recognize that we have a long history of unjust transitions. For far too long, we've allowed systemic racism, colonialism, classism, sexism, and more to dictate and drive our policymaking. We cannot allow those systems of oppression to succeed as we tackle the climate crisis. It won't just be unjust, it won't work. We won't get it done. We will not tackle climate change successfully if we leave whole communities out of the effort. Take my EV Freedom Act or Electric Vehicle Freedom Act, a proposal to, cre a proposal to create a comprehensive national network of high-speed electric vehicle chargers along our whole national uh, highway system within five years. I'm not just talking about the interstates, I'm talking about the whole highway system. So you can get in an EV anywhere and drive anywhere else in the whole US without worrying about running out of juice. The whole 40, lower 48, but Alaska and Hawaii too. The EV Freedom Act will help secure the automotive and infrastructure jobs of the future with robust Buy American and prevailing wage requirements to protect hardworking Americans so we can build a future in which every car on the road is an electric one built here in the United States by unionized workers. And the bill makes clear that we have to uh, put opportunities for and the needs of frontline and vulnerable communities first. So I'm talking about thousands and thousands of IBW jobs to build out the charging infrastructure, thousands and thousands of utility worker jobs to build the substations needed to power all those chargers and not to mention the auto jobs. We've got to do everything in that way. We've got this incredible moment of transition where we must change course. We've got to make it easier for work and workers to bargain collectively. We've got to ensure that frontline communities are priority. We've got to make sure that wealth among the many and not the few and the protection of our one precious earth are all considered in our policy decisions in every single one of them. But to get this done, we as policymakers have to begin by listening. Listening to our communities and our workers, uplifting our communities and our workers who are on the front lines and calling on us to act and act now and make good on our promises to build back better. Not in 10 or 20 years down the road when it's too late. It's already too late. So let's get going. Let's do it right now in a way that builds a just beautiful world for all of our people in all their incredible and beautiful diversity. I'm with you, ready to go. In addition to the EV Freedom Act, I uh, just introduced uh, with Senator Warren um, the Build Green Act, um, also with uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who's a partner in a lot of what I do. And we're, I'm just totally on board with the priorities of the Thrive Agenda and the larger uh, Green New Deal that all my legislation is a part of. And let me close by thanking the Labor Network for Sustainability um, and this Just Transition Listening Project. It's such a great idea. Uh, you did such a great job putting this together. I really look forward to hearing about this report and thanks for all the organizing you're doing to tackle all of our problems and do so in a way that lifts up our communities who've suffered long. And as we were saying before we started, 
not just our diverse communities in this country, but all the communities throughout the world in the global south that didn't do very much to contribute to the buildup of greenhouse gases, but are bearing the brunt of the, of the problems they're causing. Thanks, Michael.